I want to, uh, first of all, welcome you here to the Pomona Fairplex. This is a press conference that um, we're hosting here uh, regarding the emergency intake site for unaccompanied youth this morning. I'm Hilda Solis, chair of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, and I am so proud and delighted to be here in the city of Pomona, which is part of the first district. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. You know, there are moments that define this country and the county of Los Angeles. And this, in my opinion, is one of those moments. In this exhibition hall and on this campus of Fairplex, there will soon be thousands of young people inhabiting this space, which will be an emergency intake site. These are young people who are fleeing violence and poverty in their home countries seeking asylum and refuge in the United States to escape the conditions brought upon them through no fault of their own. They're escaping violence for, of many forms, gang violence, domestic violence. Some of them have faced discrimination because of their sexual orientation or religion. Many of them are leaving such abject poverty that should be a crime in any country. And all of them dream for a better life, one that this country and that the county here in Los Angeles can offer. As a daughter of immigrants, I know just how much a parent is willing to sacrifice for a better life for their children. For a mother to send her child unaccompanied on a dangerous journey proves how dire this situation is. They are risking their lives, just like many other immigrants throughout our nation's history. These children are undertaking a dangerous and traumatic journey, all to get a chance at a new life. And that dream of a new life will start right here at Pomona Fairplex, where they will be welcomed. For over a year now, Pomona Fairplex has proven its ability to respond to humanitarian crisis. The leadership and the board of the Pomona Fairplex stepped up to offer all they could to help us address COVID-19, recognizing that this is a crisis that affects all of us. And let me be clear, this crisis we are here to address is one that affects all of us as well. It is not a border crisis, it is a humanitarian crisis, and that impacts all of us. That's why when the White House called me to see if Los Angeles County would be receptive to helping care for these young people, I did not hesitate. I knew this community would say unequivocally yes. And I want to personally thank the mayor, the council members here in Pomona for their courage and their support and their commitment. And I want to thank the Fairplex board and the foundation because they also today are a shining beacon of hope for so many people. That arc, that golden arc, is right over Fairplex, and it has been since the pandemic started and even before then. At this time, when in-person conferences and meetings and even live entertainment, uh, right now, uh, people can't come here in the usual manner. And it had stayed vacant here for a while. But there was other activity. There was testing going on for COVID, vaccinations that are happening right now, a child care facility that's still operating. So much is still going on here on this campus. And in a few days or so, we're going to see 2,500 young people who could be here hopefully in a matter of days. And although the contract has not yet been fully executed, the Pomona Fairplex and Los Angeles County are all partners in making preparations to welcome these young people here. They may have been successful in leaving some form of pain behind, but we know they are going to be enduring significant trauma that we all have a responsibility to address. We're working hand in hand right now with the White House to identify culturally competent service providers, those who can help these young people cope with what they have endured. But also, they can provide educational and recreational opportunities here on this campus. And I'm saying campus. That's what this is. It's not a detention facility. 
It's not cages. It's not a jail. It's certainly not a detention camp. Nothing could be further from the truth. And staying here at the Pomona Fairplex, as you know, is temporary. I want to underscore that. The ultimate goal is to ensure these young people are transitioned out of the Pairplex and either reunited with their families here in the United States or with a loving sponsor who can care for them and give them that family support that they deserve. That's what every child deserves, regardless of geography, border, or anything else. And I, though, I know that there will be many questions regarding the length of stay here, the number of youth, the names of the service providers, and most importantly, how people can help. But I already know that this community, this compassionate city of Pomona, is going to do everything possible, working with us and others, to welcome these young people and provide them with whatever support that they need. Know that we cannot thank you enough and look forward to partnering with all of you and our local service delivery providers, our health organizations and the department, departments that have jurisdiction through the LA County Office of Children and Family Services, Department of Social Services, our educational agencies and others. And I wanna personally thank President Joe Biden and Vice President, President Kamala Harris and their administration. Their commitment to ensuring these young people are able to transition successfully is so very clear. They are not working with just any partner or identifying any venue. Instead, they are taking great pride and determination in identifying partners that will nurture the thousands of unaccompanied minors coming to the United States. I want to express my gratitude for their leadership and their partnership. You know, a lot has changed, and it hasn't even been 100 days. And I will tell you, for the past four years, there was so much hate and discrimination, not just aimed at children that came here as unaccompanied minors, but against many communities, including the Latinx community. But today, there's a beacon of hope, and that hope begins here in Los Angeles County, again, our, our uh, trusted friends in Long Beach are doing the same thing, and I'm sure that there will be more opportunity to help the thousands of children that are waiting to come into open arms to someone that will treat them with dignity and respect. I want to mention that our departments, the County of Los Angeles, is ready to assist. Our Child Welfare Agency has the necessary expertise in families and finding individuals to help these children. They are well-skilled in this area. Our health services agencies know how to provide attention and care regarding physical health. Our Department of Mental Health provides trauma-informed care in the language that they are also serving these children. So cultural competency and being able to have staff appropriately dealing with these children is of utmost importance. I also want to mention that our Office of Immigrant Affairs helps many Los Angeles County residents navigate the various systems, not just the county, but all forms of service. They are also ready and able to help, and they will. COVID-19, by the way, is not going to stop us from caring for our young people. And I can tell you that that's true right here in the city of Pomona, because we're going to continue to provide vaccinations and testing and do whatever we can to help all of our families that reside here as well. In closing, I want to acknowledge that there are likely to have uh, from the press many questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can in the coming days. But I am committed as chair of the board, and I know that I can say I speak for the rest of the board, that we all are wholeheartedly behind this venture to help these children while we can to maintain their well-being and also identify family members that reside here in Los Angeles County and wherever, and hopefully encourage people to also be foster parents and guardians to take on the role of being a parent to these children who deserve so much more. I just want to say I really want to thank the Fairplex and the Foundation and the staff, and I want to thank HHS. We have a representative here also who's, who's uh, here to answer any questions later on. Um, I had the uh, fortunate experience to meet her previously in my role as Secretary of Labor, and uh, 
she is here with us, uh, Bonnie Preston. She is Acting Regional Director for Region 9 in San Francisco for HHS. She can answer questions later. But I also, again, want to underscore how valuable the Fairplex has been to us and how outstanding and how today, in my opinion, that golden arc is over this entire campus. It has served so many people, thousands of people in so many good ways, and that's a good story for us to have at this time. So I want to I wanna begin my, my, co my comments now in Spanish, very briefly. Buenos días. Soy Hilda Solís, Presidente de la Junta de Supervisores del Condado de Los Ángeles. Hoy es un día para mí que me da mucho alegría. Me siento con mucho paz y quiero a respetar al condado, decir que el condado de Los Ángeles está aquí para ayudar y trabajar con los representantes aquí de Fairplex y de la ciudad de Pomona. Esto es un día muy, muy especial para nosotros. Pronto en estos pasillos del Fairplex habrá miles de niños que viven o vivieron en violencia, pobreza y muchas otras cosas negativas. Van a venir aquí a tener un futuro mejor. Como hija de inmigrantes, yo conozco los sacrificios de los padres que mandan a sus hijos a este pa país para tener una vida mejor. Yo sé que mi mamá que vino de Nicaragua también vino de, como un joven porque también el racismo, la pobreza, la violencia que existía allá en su tierra. Ella quería ir a venir aquí a tener su sueño americano. Y para mí, exactamente aquí en Fairplex de Pomona, donde pueden empezar una nueva vida, es un mejor lugar para ellos. No es un lugar de detención, no es un cárcel. Van a recibir servicios de salud, medicamentos, escuela, y van a tener uh, el poder a ir afuera sin tener miedo y a tener el equipo que necesitan para hacer ejercicios y también para saber el ambiente aquí es, es uh, un ambiente que es humanitario. Durante la pandemia han apoyado aquí en esta comunidad Pomona y Fairplex a muchas personas con el, eh, los pruebas de COVID-19 y también con la vacuna y también varias uh, ocasiones estábamos repartiendo comida para las familias de esta región. Entonces, por mi parte, yo veo que ahorita en este momento, el Fairplex es como un cielo, un cielo, una bendición para nuestra comunidad y para estos niños que van a llegar aquí. También quiero dar las gracias a la Casa Blanca y al presidente Joe Biden y la vicepresidente Kamala Harris porque han hecho un gran cambio en el tratamiento de estos niños que solamente llegan para tener una vida mejor. No han hecho nada mal ellos y tenemos que respetar a ellos también. Yo espero que en pocos días vamos a ver casi 2,500 niños aquí, de dos años hasta 17. Y ojalá van a tener una experiencia maravillosa, espero, aquí con nosotros. Cada niño merece una buena vida. Y yo sé que la calidad aquí que van a ofrecer de, con los departamentos de salud federal, de HHS y también del condado, los varios departamentos que están encargados de salud, de educación y de servicios mental, van a, van a ser ofrecidos para ello. También la oficina de inmigrantes va a ayudar. Y vamos a necesitar el apoyo de la comunidad, porque vamos a, ojalá, tener uh, personas que podemos identificar, que pueden ayudar, o, o ojalá, recibir estos niños en sus casas, porque no se van a quedar aquí por un tiempo grande. Entonces, tenemos que tener el apoyo de la comunidad. Eso es el mensaje ahora. Y de eso, solamente quiero dar las gracias a Fairplex, a, a las personas de la ciudad, el, el alcalde que están aquí hoy día con nosotros, por todo lo que han hecho, las esfuerzas, uh, abriendo sus corazones para recibir estos niños. Me da 
tanto gusto estar aquí con ellos hoy día. Y con eso, I would now like to introduce my very good friend and colleague, the Honorable Tim Sandoval, representing the great city of Pomona. Good morning. I'm Pomona Mayor Tim Sandoval. About 10 days ago, I received a call from a representative of the Biden administration who called to share that Pomona Fairplex was being considered as a site to house unaccompanied minors, and he wanted to know my thoughts. Without hesitation, I said I would support it. They are children. They are our children. And we need to do everything we can to get them reunited with their families. I did have questions because, like many of you, I've heard stories about the conditions at the Border Patrol sites where the children are being held. I asked about the plan, a bed. Who is going to deliver the services to the children. In other words, I wanted assurances that the children were going to be taken care of to the highest degree. And most importantly, I wanted to know that the Pomona Fairplex site was intended to be used as a part of a plan to reunify the children with their families. I was assured of this and that Health and Human Services would engage local nonprofits that we recommend to help the children with their health and well-being. And they are here today, some of those nonprofits that are here to help these children in their time of need. At the end of the call, I shared with the representative that Pomona is committed to doing everything we can to make the children feel welcomed. And I just want to say that one more time, that we want the children to know that they are welcomed here, that they're going to be taken care of here, and that they are our children. This is not other people's children. These are, these are our children. And we're going to do everything we can to take care of them. And lastly, Pomona is here for them. Like so many of the residents of Pomona, I myself am the product of an immigrant family. Pomona is a city that has a long history of welcoming immigrants from all over the world. As demonstrated during the course of the pandemic, Pomona is more than a compassionate city in name. We are a city that has put the compassion into action from the beginning by supporting, in fact, one of the first quarantine sites right here at Fairplex, the Sheraton Fairplex, one of the first COVID-19 testing sites, and one of the first vaccine sites. Lives have been saved here. People have been helped right here at Pomona Fairplex. I am proud to say that Pomona is a city that serves more than itself. And we stand together to do everything we can to welcome and care for the children as we work to reunite them with their families. You know, and we all know this, parents, the parents sent their children here for a better life. I can assure you that the community members that stand with us this morning, all of us, we are committed to ensure the safety and well-being of the children for whatever time it takes to get them to family or to a guardian. But we also have hope and faith by taking this step. Life will be better for these children. I'm the father 
of a baby boy. Next Friday, he will be a year old. He comes every Tuesday and Thursday here at the Fairplex Child Center. I can't begin to imagine what it would be like to be separated from him. It would devastate me and my wife. We have an obligation. We have an obligation as compassionate human beings to do everything we can to get these children home to their loved ones. Pomona and all of us here today are committed to doing that. And finally, the soul of our country is often put to the test. This is one of those moments. This is the right thing to do. This is the just thing to do. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Walter Marquez, who is representing Pomona Fairplex. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Walter Marquez, the interim CEO at Fairplex. Over the last few days, we have been engaged in discussion with Health and Human Services and other federal agencies to explore the opportunity of Fairplex, uh, a portion of our campus functioning as an emergency intake uh, service site uh, for, for HHNS. During that time, we have looked at our grounds, they've explored our grounds, and they've also taken a look and an understanding of who Fairplex is and what we represent. Over these last, this last year has been a difficult year uh, for the entire nation and for the entire world. Fairplex has stepped up, and we appreciate the efforts of Supervisor Solis and the mayor for supporting us during this time and helping us uh, save lives, as you described. As I introduced this idea to our board, our board was very concerned about the safety of the children, as they should and as we all should be. And although we don't have a contract in hand right now, uh, please know that it is the priority of Fairplex, it is a priority of our board and our association, that the safety, the well-being, and the self-dignity of every child is maintained while they are on our grounds. We take that responsibility seriously. I want to thank, thank the supervisor, I want to thank the mayor for their friendship and their support uh, during this effort, but I also want to take a minute and thank the staff at Fairplex. We have been stretched and pulled in many different ways this year, far more than we ever anticipated. And I want to thank you for stepping up and being ready to serve at this particular point in time. At this point in time, we'll take questions from the media. Hi, my name is Norma Ribeiro. I'm with Telemundo. I'm, I'm going to be doing the questions today. Um, the first set comes from Jeff with La Nueva Voz. And the first one is actually for Bonnie uh, from HHS. Um, who is the contract with and what is the length of the contract? Then um, the next two questions are for Walter. Um, where, the, where will the children stay and what's the capacity? For Walter as well, how active of the role of the Fairplex team have? And for Supervisor Solis, who will be coordinating resources like counseling, education, medical care for the children? Hi, just want to introduce myself before we get into questions. I'm Bonnie Preston, and I'm currently the acting regional director for this region, Region 9. It includes California. Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, and the Pacific Territories, and the Freely Associated States. So California um, is always the biggest um, in everything it's part of. So um, it's the biggest state in our region. And um, 
as the regional director, I represent our new secretary, Javier Becerra, who has taken on this humanitarian mission to make sure that when um, children come into this country and are put by law in HHS custody, that they're well taken care of and that they are safely united with those that they came to be united with, usually a family member. Um, other times it's a close relative, but these people have to be vetted and it takes time. And so the Fairplex and LA County stepping up to help this effort is, is just a really huge and wonderful thing um, for us. And it builds upon a long, long partnership. We've worked together um, on expanding health insurance and Medi-Cal to Californians um, under the Affordable Care Act. We've worked together to combat COVID-19 and uh, the fact that, fact that the Fairplex has testing going on and now vaccination is, um, they've been an amazing partner um, in LA County and the county has been an amazing partner with HHS. So um, this is another venture that we're going to enter into, we hope, together. Um, we're looking to the county to help in this humanitarian mission in the way that California usually does it. They step up and they go big. So we're very, very grateful for the continuing partnership and we look forward to um, a very successful humanitarian mission, hopefully here at the Fairplex and um, as you probably know, we're working on other sites as well in LA County. So thank you so much. And for the question, um, the, yeah, the question was- so, who is the contract with and what is the length of the contract? So the contract will be um, with Health and Human Services, our Administration for Children and Families, and Office of the Refugee Resettlement. And so that will be the contractor from the federal government. And the contracts will be for the convention center. It will be with the Fairplex nonprofit. Um, there are also other contracts being sought for the medical care the wrap and wraparound services so it will hhs is the is the payer the contractee um and these it, there will be different contracts for these different uh scopes of work the most important as everyone talked about is um the case management which will um, is the service where we will unite, reunite the children with safely with their sponsors. Okay. Thank you. Do you need me to repeat your question? Sorry. So where will the children stay and what's the capacity? And then the second one, how active of a role will the Fairplex team have? So the details uh, specific to which buildings uh, are also be being worked out right now uh, with the logistics with HHS as they come on site and tour the grounds. Uh, a portion of the campus, not the entire campus, will be used. The capacity will be based on which buildings ultimately can be secured appropriately uh, to provide the appropriate care. Fairplex's role will be to support the logistics from a facility standpoint. Uh, we're not a care uh, nonprofit entity. We're a event space, so we know how to do events and we do them well. Uh, so from that aspect, Fairplex's role is, is that kind of an indirect service uh, to the children uh, via facilities. And for supervisor, who will be coordinating resources like counseling, education, and medical care for the children? Thank you for the question. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the County of Los Angeles uh, will clearly, I think, play a, a significant role. Uh, and one of the roles that we will undertake is making sure that we have our Department of Mental Health involved, our children, our uh, Department of Children and Family Services. 
uh, which also undertakes this role and works with the Office of Refugee Assistance already. We've had children in the past under our care as well at similar, similar places where we contract services as well. But the most important thing I will say to you is that we want to connect with our community-based organizations, and some of them are here, and we will obviously be looking and seeking for others to also be partners with the federal government in helping us identify, provide the case management, but more importantly, those networks that they have in existence now that can help us identify uh, eligible parents or guardianship, creating opportunities for foster parents and people, perhaps even adoption, that might be interested in helping uh, placement of these young, young children. And, and I know the ages are going to vary, but I think that's really what we're looking at. The kinds of services we provide uh, will depend on the needs of the child. Obviously, we're very, we're very uh, concerned about the uh, traumatization and the mental health services education that should be given to them in the language and competency that they are going to need. Um, I think there's a lot of services that are already available in the surrounding area, so it's a matter of working uh, with other uh, organizations, and the county can do that fairly well because we, we do that now. Um, so I know that our uh, Board of Supervisors as well as our CEO is very committed to helping us uh, move this forward, and we're delighted that uh, even that this place is even being considered. It, it, if you've seen uh, pictures of what uh, the convention center services that have been set up in San Diego, you can see that each child has an individual cot, that they have services there, they get tested, they get meals, they get case management. And that's exactly what this model will look at here. So if you could envision seeing children in, a, in an area and probably separated by age and with uh, nursing care, health care that they're going to need. I think it's going to be something that um, we would want in terms of setting very high standards. So we will work with the federal government, HHS, our partners, and the Fairplex staff and everyone else that is committed to seeing that this, uh, this happen as smoothly as possible and that we um, you know, welcome these children who may be coming here in a matter of, a matter of days. So again, thank you. And I would just add, if I can, that uh, already the administration, the Biden administration, has been operating similar facilities around the country, particularly in Texas, and we know in San Diego, and in other parts of the United States. So um, I think that Los Angeles County, uh, like Long Beach and Pomona now, are stepping up. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so the next uh, set of questions are from Amy with the AP. And it's actually for supervisors, so it's the first one. And what access will Los Angeles County officials have to the facility in Pomona and also a similar facility being set up in Long Beach? And what responsibility will the county have for oversight of conditions in these facilities, if any? So uh, it's kind of hard to hear because there's an echo in the room here. But... Sorry, she's asking um, what access will the county officials have to the facility in Pomona? The, the, the children here, what no, access the will they have? LA County, Los Angeles in County. In the county. That's, what, that's her question. Maybe I'm not understanding. And also a similar facility. What, the, what would the county responsibility be to oversight the conditions of the facility? Well, I think the county, in terms of oversight, obviously is going to play a, a particular role and interest because we initially were contacted about this and agreed to help facilitate. So uh, with respect to um, what the county will do will depend on the types of services that are being offered, working in conjunction with the foundation here of Fairplex because they lease the property from the county, this county property, but we know that this is a partnership that's been ongoing for many, many decades, if not more than a hundred years. But I will say this, that our responsibility is to make sure that there is adequate uh, protections, safety, health-wise, mental health, as well as any other services that these children will be eligible for. So even as they are transitioning out of the Fairplex and finding a placement with a family or with another uh, guardian, uh, we're going to make sure that there is continuity. And that's what the whole uh, meaning of case management is, that there is a safety net, that there is a safety net provided for these uh, young children. Um, your first question was about access. Who will have access here? Yeah, I guess responsibilities and access. Well, the, the, I'm, I'm certain that the, that 
there will be ample ample opportunity for our various service providers and our agencies to come in here and be able to do the kinds of work that is going to be necessary. Children are going to also need representation and we know that we have partners in the free legal aid area and they're going to need that representation as well as with their guardians or potential family members that they're going to be reunited with because they still will have to go through uh, immigration proceedings. And that will take time. And so we need to have lawyers. We need to have people also uh, to help provide additional services. I, I can already think of many foundations that are going to want to contribute uh, school supplies, clothing, backpacks, games, things of that nature to help these children uh, become you know, more at ease, relaxed, and into, you know, a, a better place for them here. They're going to have opportunity to exercise. They're going to have opportunity to be uh, educated and have instructors that will speak their language. And because many of these youngsters will speak uh, another, uh, another language, not just Spanish, but other uh, dialects from different parts of Central America, we're also going to be challenged with finding the right people that can speak their language and making sure that we... we take care of them in the most appropriate way. Okay, thank you for that. And the next uh, comes from Amy as well. It's going to be for Bonnie. And are there, are there plans to unite these children with family in the United States if they have them, reunite them with their families back home, or place these children in foster care? What is a long-term long plan? I'm sorry, I... I uh, it's so hard uh, because we're both speaking through mass. It's so hard to hear. Could 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 you say something about <laughs> matching up the children? I don't. I didn't hear what so, you said. So, what are the plans to uh, for these children to reunite them with family in the United States, or if they have family here, reunite them with their families back home? If they, have, I mean, if they don't have family here, I guess to send them back home, or to place them with foster care. Right. So um, HHS operates the um, services through the Office of Refugee Resettlement. So we have a program for unaccompanied children that these shelters will follow many of the regulations and guidelines of that program. And the fir first priority really of, um, reunif of what's going to happen to the children is most of them come from their countries and turn themselves over to Border Patrol. And so they're taken into custody, and they, a majority of them have a sponsor in this country. So they come with names and phone numbers. So they're just, they're trying to get to a place where they can make a connection with that sponsor. So that's the kind of the major thrust. Um, there are some children in the end where the sponsor maybe doesn't check out. We don't have, um, we can't verify the identity or um, it doesn't seem like a safe sponsor. Then those children end up staying in with HHS longer, wouldn't stay at a facility like this emergency um, intake shelter that the Fairplex is proposing to sponsor but they would be at a longer term facility where there was more, more services for them. And during that time, they would work with um, county services to find a placement for them. Guardianship, guardianship or foster care. But the, a majority of the children that are being taken care of in these emergency intake cent shelters now across the country are being connected with sponsors that they came to meet. Um, so that's that's what we're, and in these shelter, emergency shelters, we're trying that um, children wouldn't stay there in for longer than 30, 35 days. Pardon? Um, that, that really isn't part of this, that, that really isn't part of this program. Um, if we were to find out through trying to match them with a sponsor that there are people back home who want that they are their they are their children, then that would ha we would reunite them with their families. But 
Um, generally, these children have have come a long way to be met, be paired up with these sponsors in this country. Thank you. Thank you. So the next set of questions are from Steve with Southern California News Group. Uh, for Bonnie, are these only children, and if so, what are the ages? Where did the children come from? What are the ages? So the children that um, I think we're talking about, although you know these needs change all the time based on who's showing up at the border. So that's why this is truly an emergency operation. Um, so, but it depends. I think with the the need at this time is for children in the ages of 12 to 17. And that, so that is the target population who we're asking for help from LA County. They talk to you about that? Yeah, depending on, there are a good number of younger children under 12 also, um, but it depends. That's what will be talked about with the county of how, because there are different services, as you know, um, that are required for younger children versus the teenagers. So. Um, in the contracting process, well, that's, they will talk about who the target population is. But the large majority of children that we've been trying to place who've been in Border Patrol custody the longest um, have been the age group of 12 to 17. And for Bonnie as well, will the, the children be tested for COVID-19? And if so, what is the protocol if they are positive? So yes, I mean, as We know we're in the middle of a pandemic. So when, what has been happening, I've been over at the San Diego shelter and what has been happening is they're tested when they come out of border patrol to put, be put into transportation and the COVID positive cases are separated and they're transported separately. Then they come to the emergency intake site and they're given a COVID test on intake as well. And so um, the office of um, the, the shelters have been cohorting the children into groups of uh, COVID negative, then COVID positive, and then ex COVID exposed. And then they're managed separately. The, the, the children who are COVID positive will be placed in a separate area in the intake, it's with different air filtration and everything. And then the exposed children will, will as well. But all these details need to be uh, worked out with the Fairplex as we look at different um, facilities on site. Thank you for that. Um, so the next one is for Walter. What will happen to other groups that have been used in the campus? The Sheraton Hotel have been used for first responders, there are nonprofit hosting food giveaways um, in the parking lots, and Western University of Health Service Sciences have been using different conference rooms for teaching students. Will these activities be suspended or will they continue? Because of the vastness of Fairplex, over approximately 500 acres on the grounds, Uh, this is why we're, some of the logistic details are continuing to get worked out. The grounds will continue to operate uh, with other activities that we do have, uh, either contracted or the vaccine site, for example, will continue. The testing site will continue. Uh, so it really is we're, what we're looking at and exploring with uh, HHS and the team is the southern portion of our campus. And it was specifically to the exhibition halls, if you're familiar with our grounds. Uh, so we will continue to uh, have our nonprofit organization, the Learning Center, uh, where we uh, help high school children uh, get career, career tech learning, and other activities on grounds will, will continue. I think that's the last one, right? The Supervisor Solis, I think Steve is also asking if the COVID testing and vaccination continue here as well. As far as I know, uh, because of 
the undertaking that uh, will occur here with HHS and how the children are, are settling in here, there's room enough on this campus to continue to do the testing for uh, COVID-19 as well as for vaccinations as long as we're still in that cycle. And I also will say that the children that will be cared for here will, will also receive COVID-19 testing on a regular basis not just one time when they come in. And also, I'm assuming that they will also be vaccinated. You know, so I'm, I'm, I know that that will also will eventually take place as well. And we'll be a part of that. The county is, is, the, is the body that is also involved in, the, in all of those aspects of health care. So I don't, have, I don't have great concerns about that right now, but I know that there's contractual agreement that has to be worked out, and we'll let that work itself out. But I think this community... Pomona overall has been very welcoming as you've heard and I know that there are many services but this campus is so large it is really its own resort it, it is a jewel a jewel in uh, a diamond in my opinion and there are so many different activities that will help us uh, help the children acclimate to a new environment and hopefully a, a healthy one with all the support that they need from mental health, wraparound services, legal assistance, and teaching, and all of those things that a child needs to, be, uh, to, to grow up in a, in a good environment and be able to be successful. That's what we want. Okay, the, we're done with the questions uh, in English. I'm gonna transition to Spanish, and I'm gonna ask you in Espanol una pregunta, okay. Supervisora. Um, ¿Por cuánto tiempo se van a quedar acá los niños? ¿Hay un estimado? ¿Y qué mensaje le tiene a los padres de estos niños en sus países? Bueno, este, este plan es, es solamente temporario. Que no se van a quedar aquí años ni no creo. Eso no es el plan. El plan es que van a recibir los niños aquí, van a quedarse aquí más o menos un mes o lo que sea, para identificar las, los padres o personas familiares que están con, con, uh, conectados con estos, con estos niños. Muchos de ellos ya llegan con números de teléfono o tienen papelitos con nombres de personas que, que viven aquí en Estados Unidos. Entonces, el, el plan es para identificar a estas personas que ojalá no tiene, tienen problemas en su récord tampoco para reunir estos niños con ellos y si no también los servicios del departamento del condado uh, vamos a ofrecer los servicios de, de foster care y de adoption todo eso para ayudar a los que, que se van a quedar aquí pero igualmente si hay padres en otros países que, que están buscando sus niños que les quieren a regresar yo pienso que eso, eso se va a hacer todo se va, se va a hacer con, con humildad y con, con lo, el, el pensamiento de los niños, el cuidado de ellos. Y necesitamos el apoyo de la comunidad, porque yo sé que está, tenemos que trabajar con los consulados también, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua y también México, a ver cómo podemos a, a contactar nuestras residentes que viven aquí también y que se juntan a hacer un, un grupo, un equipo pues que nos puede ayudar a identificar uh, guardia y, y padres y familiares para, para mantener estos niños. Y el condado también puede ofrecer servicios, ya que se juntan estos niños con familias, hay muchos recursos que también se puede ofrecer uh, para medicinas, educación, y hasta para la ayuda para ojalá tener todo el equipo para que ese niño o niña se puedan a, a quedar aquí y, a, y hacerse uh, residentes y si no re, residentes también ojalá que se puedan hacer ciudadanos también esos países que mandan a sus niños para acá bueno en, en este momento no queremos que, que mandan a los niños así qué cosa a ver eso en, en, en los medios de comunicación a ver un niño desde Nicaragua que, que le dejaron abandonado en un desierto y yo, yo eso pues yo sé que es, no, es, no es humano y yo no pienso que una, un padre quiere ver su niño uh, perder su vida así entonces el mensaje es que se ojalá pueden atrabar con el gobierno de Estados Unidos y hacer su aplicación si pueden en su tierra donde viven para asilo, inmigración y lo que sea, porque todo ha cambiado con esta nueva administración. 
Y eso sí le voy a decir, usted, usted lo puede ver el cambio. No estamos poniendo a estos niños en el cárcel, en, en un centro de ten, detención. Aquí van a recibir con, con mucho apoyo el, el, el equipo que necesitan para mantener sus vidas aquí, si se quieren a quedar. Thank you everyone for tuning in. That concludes today's press conference.